In this video, we are tracking severe weather in the southeast. The Storm Prediction Center has issued a slight risk with a 5% chance of tornadoes. At the same time, a surprise blast of snow will take place from Mississippi all the way to New Jersey. We're going to forecast how much snow you can see and then take a look down the road at what could be the next big storm. Welcome back, y'all. Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. Before we get started today, I do want to thank the over 800,000 people who tuned in to the severe weather coverage last night with the help of Storm Chasers Vince Welty, Brandon Kopic, Nick Gorman and Brandon Barrel, along with all of you guys, we got vital information out to a lot of people. Last night's severe weather was no joke. There were some really bad storms and tornadoes, but it absolutely could have been worse. And that's why I think the tool that we're building together is extremely valuable for the future of broadcast meteorology. Now let's talk about the future of the actual weather on the forecast models. All right, starting out here with the HRRR model. This is the high resolution rapid refresh model. This is what the radar could look like as we go into the future. And if you want to keep up with the date and time, it's always going to be displayed above my head there in Eastern time. Here we are around 12 p.m. today, around the time this video should go up, and we've got snow breaking out in Arkansas all the way up into Tennessee. And I know you guys wanna talk about that, trust me, I do too, but I am gonna start off with the severe weather threat here in the Southeast, okay? We do have that slight risk of severe weather from the Storm Prediction Center. With the 5% chance of tornadoes, let me show you what my thinking on that is, okay? We have two rounds of storms that are gonna come through. Around 7 or 8 p.m. tonight uh, in Southern Georgia into Central South South Carolina. Some storms are going to break out on the front leading edge. These definitely could be severe here. Okay. So if you're in Southeastern Georgia, all the way up through the Columbia, South Carolina region, even like uh, Myrtle Beach in that general area, be ready for some big storms. Of course, all across Eastern North Carolina as well, all the way into 11 PM, we are going to be seeing some isolated severe weather, but that's not the main problem. Okay. This storm that, <laughs> that we're looking at here, if you can't tell is a mean little storm. It's kind of small in the overall scope of things, but the dynamic dynamics behind this storm are absolutely incredible, okay? So we've got a bunch of cold air coming around uh, to cause the snow, obviously, but a lot of it is infiltrating all the way into the central area where that low pressure is spinning. And then of course, obviously, we have a humongous amount of warm, moist air out of front of that. You put those things together and right here around that surface low track, I'm really concerned about this line of storms and any sort of storm that pops out in front of it. This is around 2 a.m. tonight. Let's track this all the way through into uh, 8 a.m tomorrow morning right here around that triple point right next to the surface low pressure, um, I think we have a very elevated chance of seeing some uh, tornadoes. Certainly, once again, just like yesterday, we're not talking about a tornado outbreak, but the isolated possibility for some strong tornadoes, I think is there. Let me explain why. Look at this, around 3 a.m., we have uh, an ample amount of tornado juice. You combine this brown and white stuff right here with the other ingredients that we have in place, and we are actually entering a period of time where conditions are favorable for tornadoes. And that really, it actually intensifies as it goes off to the north and east. Also, the dynamics of the moisture setup here is what's going to cause these storms to form. We've got dew points in the mid 60s right next to dew points in the 40s, okay? That dry line there is going to force that warm air up into the atmosphere and cause storms. The higher up in the atmosphere those storms go, the more likely they are to interact with that lower level jet stream or our tornado juice. And kind of like a zipper here, that dry line is going to meet up with those uh, warm dew points right next to the surface low pressure all the way until it exits North Carolina there. And it's right around that nose, that warm nose there that I'm expecting the greatest likelihood for severe weather and uh, isolated tornadoes. Okay, let's put all the ingredients together and look at that significant tornado parameter. We have two time periods where I think we have the greatest chance of seeing severe weather and tornadoes. That's going to be around 2 a.m. here on the border of Georgia and South Carolina. You can see we have uh, some very high significant tornado parameter numbers here, okay? In fact, I think the dynamics are actually better for tornadoes in this storm system uh, than they were yesterday with our, you you know, enhanced risk of severe weather and everything. So it's not gonna be a widespread tornado outbreak. Don't get me wrong here. I'm not trying to hype this up. I'm just trying to make sure you are prepared. This looks very tornado-y to me. And then things kind of cool down for a little bit until that warm nose reaches the northeast coast of North Carolina. So this is an area from Williamston to Kill Devil Hills and Elizabeth City. Somewhere over here in the Outer Banks or on the eastern side of North Carolina is gonna see a significant round of severe weather and possibly a tornado or two. Keep that in mind. Now, like I said, this is what the radar could look like as we go into the future. It's not exact, but tonight into early tomorrow morning, you are going to actually want to look at a real radar as the storms are going on. And it's very important that you get a very good one. And that brings us to today's sponsor. Radar Omega, a powerful tool for more than just radar. The number one question I get asked on this channel every single day is what radar app do you recommend? And Radar Omega is always included in that answer. With fast updating alerts from the National Weather Service, copious amounts of radar 
LiDAR data and the ability to zoom all the way down to the building and street level, this is the perfect app for both veteran weather watchers and your average Joe who just wants to look at clear and accurate information. This is more than just a radar app. You can view lightning data, satellite imagery, and you can even view that satellite in 3D, which is probably one of my favorite features. You know you want it. Go ahead and treat yourself by clicking those links in the description to download on iOS or Android. Now let's get back into the video. All right, I know everybody in uh, the more northern areas all the way into the mid-Atlantic was watching that last part and they were just like, is, am, am I seeing this right? Is that is that heavy snow going through Mississippi, Alabama, through the Appalachians into the mid-Atlantic? That is exactly what we're seeing here. During the severe weather outbreak yesterday, this thing really ramped up into a full-on snowstorm for a lot of people. So that's what we're going to talk about now. Around 5 p.m. this evening, it should be snowing from Memphis all the way up into Paducah, Kentucky, possibly even as far south as into extreme northeastern Louisiana. This is not going to be like long-term heavy snow that sticks around for a long time, but it's going to be a very quick burst of, you know, some intermittent heavy snow showers. As this thing tracks east, though, it really amplifies. Look at this. All the way down into Birmingham, Alabama and points south, you're going to see a very quick shot of heavy snow tonight. Even further south in Birmingham, maybe even as far south as Montgomery, Alabama, getting in on the snow. Of course, Middle Tennessee is getting that big burst of snow. And then something happens here whenever this storm crosses the Appalachian Mountains and it really blows up. This dark blue area here is a very heavy band of snow. We're talking about blinding conditions here and a very interesting tidbit. All of our storms down here in South Carolina and North Carolina that are causing our potential severe weather problems will be running up into that cold air. I don't think they're going to stop being thunderstorms. That means we're gonna be talking about thunder snow in Virginia. 9 a.m. tomorrow morning, I think somewhere around Fredericksburg, somewhere in there in Virginia, it's going to be lightning. It's going to be thundering. It's going to be winding all at the same time. Please, please, if you have the ability to, uh, please take a video of this for me. I, I've never personally experienced thunder snow. I've always wanted to. I feel like quite a few of you guys are going to uh, during this. So please <laughs> share that experience with me. I think we're going to see thunder snow even into the Del Marva area, possibly portions of southern Delaware, extreme southern New Jersey there near Avalon. And the northern part of this precipitation shield is going to try to bring some snow to even uh, Long Island and maybe even Cape Cod there, but this particular model doesn't show it making it that far north. So here are the snow totals from the NAM. Look at this. Somebody in central Alabama is probably going to see three inches of snow. That's crazy. Pretty much everywhere in the pink there is above nine or ten inches of snow. And, and there's a couple of places here that are forecasted to get maybe a foot of snow on this one model. Okay, so but there's more models to look at. Here's what the Euro model is showing. And as you can see, the whole track is a little bit further to the north and to the west. This brings some snow into Long Island once again. So southern portions of Rhode Island. This puts down over six inches of snow in uh, Washington, D.C. And then, of course, over a foot of snow there in southern New Jersey and parts of Delaware. The GFS is probably the most bullish with uh, portions of Delaware getting 17 inches of snow. Widespread snow over a foot through pretty much the whole state of Virginia, except for extreme southeastern portions. But it is a tad bit further south. As you can see, Long Island doesn't get as much snow in it, and it doesn't go as far north into New Jersey. And then the Canadian model is by far the most reserved because of course those Canadians, they want to keep their snow, their biggest export, but still a very consistent path here as to you know where we think the uh, the axis of heaviest snow is going to fall. I personally like the track of the NAM 3 kilometer. Uh, however, I do think that the totals might be a little bit overdone here. If I was making a forecast, I'd say if you draw a line here in New Jersey from just south of Tom's River to Philadelphia, go about 20 miles south of that, and then from that point to the extreme southern portion of the state, you're in Snowtown, baby. With anywhere from four to eight inches of snow. Dover, Delaware is snow town, baby, with over eight inches of snow likely. Now in Washington, D.C., man, it's always so tough to forecast for you. You're right on the line. There's a chance you get nothing. There's a chance you get six to eight inches. My personal forecast for you is going to be a good one to four, okay? That's that's what I'm calling. The same thing down here towards Richmond, Virginia. Uh, the, your problem is uh, a lot of the storm's going to be rain, and we have to depend on that cold air to chase the rain out, and uh, you have to transition over to snow before you get your totals, and that doesn't always work. So I'm saying probably two to four inches, maybe, but who knows? Now, Fredericksburg, Virginia, snow town, baby. Okay. You guys are going to get probably eight inches of snow or more. Some honorable mentions here. I do think the vast majority of the uh, deep South down here is going to get, you know, a skiff of snow to an inch, but there will be a couple places, especially in Tennessee, Alabama, and Northern Georgia uh, that see uh, three inches of snow or more. Of course, the mountains here, the Appalachian mountains in North Carolina and Virginia are going to get clobbered. We'll see some uh, totals above a foot in some of those mountainous areas. 
and even your friendly YouTube weather dude here is going to get a little bit of snow, which makes me very happy. I'm tired of talking about the severe weather. Let's get into snow season. All right. What about the future? Let's go even further down the road on the Euro model. Of course, here's the uh, initial storm that we're talking about now that's going to go through the mid-Atlantic, be a big snowstorm over there. After that, we get a period of quiet weather through much of the central and eastern portion of the U.S. with some slightly warmer temperatures returning. But I want you to focus your eyes over here to the Pacific Northwest. Let me draw this back a little bit. Just keep your eyes over there. Look at all the snow. Look at all the rain. Do they ever get a break? Maybe, maybe around January 8th. Between now and January 8th, it's very likely that some places here in Washington and Oregon and all the way up into British Columbia, some of those higher elevations are going to see 30, 40, 50 inches of snow with some isolated areas that could approach 100 inches of snow. An absolute deluge of moisture is going to continue uh, to come in through the Pacific Northwest. And where it doesn't snow, it's going to rain, okay? Widespread totals of two to three inches is likely in the valleys uh, with some isolated areas that could see as high as four or five inches. Guys, this is going to lead to mudslides and flooding. Please be ready for that. Now, around January 5th, some of that moisture does escape from the Pacific Northwest and tries to come down and meet up with some uh, energy there from the Gulf of Mexico. We've seen this one before. What happens? They combine and we have a storm on our hands. Here's a low pressure center there uh, over the Appalachian Mountains on January 6th. Uh, this is likely going to bring down some very cold air into the upper Midwest, and that's going to merge with our moisture from the Gulf and cause snow there in the Ohio Valley. Now, here's the thing that is really interesting. As this goes off to the north and east, this does look to me like it's going to try to become some sort of nor'easter over here. Pennsylvania, New York, uh, Massachusetts, Connecticut, you guys have been, you know, snow starved. It looks like this is the storm that could potentially change that for you. And in a significant way, okay, all the way out there on January 7th, uh, we have a 983 millibar low to a lot of the northeastern portion of the U.S. And then a huge blast of cold air behind it, by the way, uh, for the Great Lakes all the way down into the mid-Atlantic. Now, this is still very far out. There's a lot of things that can change, but I think that this has the uh, potential to be a very significant East Coast storm. Let me get a little nerdy with you for a second. What we're watching is this wave right here, okay? This is the piece of energy or the wavy thing that is going to cause our storm as we go later on into next week. And what we've got to watch out for is this uh, additional piece of vorticity up here, way up north in Canada. A lot of times in situations like this, this will dip down a little bit further to the south, causing this to also dip further south, and that can produce a more significant storm, okay? And here's the thing, this is also going to be a negatively tilted trough as it gets to the east coast. So anytime one of these wavy things, the bottom of it points to the south and east, that's a negatively tilted trough. And usually when we're talking about low pressure systems and stuff forming along that, uh, that means a more significant uh, system for us. So if this trough is deeper and continues to have a negative tilt, what that means is that the low pressure center here will more than likely be stronger. It'll be able to pull more cold air down behind it, uh, and it'll just be an overall, you know, better storm, a more widespread storm for uh, not only the East Coast, but the Ohio Valley as well. So once again, this is just one model run on one day. Uh, things are going to change dramatically as we go into the future, but it is something to watch. Okay, now let's look at those temperature anomalies, and as you can see, a very large area of cooler than average weather is getting ready to take over on the East Coast. This is Monday, January 3rd, around 7 p.m. We're going to be below average through the vast majority of America, except for over here around Montana and Nebraska. We're going to be slightly above average there. And that warmth is going to build into the Midwest, and we are going to have one more wave of heat coming through the central and eastern portion of the U.S. But look at this giant area of bitterly cold temperatures forming up here in the B.C. of Canada, into Alberta, and Saskatchewan. Uh, that is going to start peeling down into Montana around January 5th, and guys, I'm telling you, if you're in Montana, get ready for this. This is not normal cold. This is dangerous cold, bitter cold, and some of that cold air is going to extend all the way down into uh, Nebraska and portions of Colorado and Kansas more than likely around January 6th. And this is the cold air blast that's really going to form or help form our next storm and, and allow it to produce snow there on the northern side, okay? And once again, we're, we're going to be much colder than average next weekend for a lot of the eastern U.S. But what keeps happening is after these cold snaps, we get a huge warm ridge that moves in, which just allows the formation for another storm. We're going to see this over and over again where we get warm and then we get cold. We get warm and we get cold. Um, and this is just going to allow for storms to come through and just, uh, I mean, I, I don't know if I'm ever going to get a break over here, but that is more than okay because I love what I do. Thank you guys for giving me the best job in the world. Make sure you slap that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and turn those notifications on. And of course, if you support me and what I'm doing here on this channel, please support the people that are sponsoring. Radar Omega is an awesome app, and if you've been watching for a while, you know that I've been using them and talking about them long before 
before I was ever sponsored by them. So it's a good app. You're not going to regret it. Go buy it so they sponsor me again, okay? <laughs> and I will see you in the next one. Huh?